Rock Lee is the one character I've always considered the anomaly of all characters in Naruto. Now, of course, when you think about what's different about Rock Lee, you think about he's the only shinobi who can't use jutsu. But it goes further and stranger than that. One aspect about him I've always found peculiar is his behavior and his personality. Naruto has a wide range of behaviors and personalities, but whenever I've seen Lee interact in the scene, he's always stuck out to me. As in, there's something special about him that makes him act far different from any other character. Another odd facet about him is his design. He's the only character we've seen just straight up copy another character's outfit and hairstyle. More importantly, he's the only character in the series that has circles for eyes. Kisame's eyes are circular and shark-like because he resembles a shark. But if you look at Rock Lee's, they are just pure circles. It's a very odd design choice factoring in the previous oddities I just mentioned. The oddest part of Rock Lee's character is that no one seems to question any of this. Specifically, no one has much of an answer for why he's the sole shinobi he can't do what is supposed to make a shinobi a shinobi. If anyone asks this online, I just see people say that it was said he has no aptitude for it. This is such a shallow answer, considering how, like, with any community, some people like to make theories on the gray areas of Naruto. Often these theories have no evidence supporting it at all, and yet I can't find anyone making a theory on this overlooked mystery. Now, I have a comprehensive theory that is more logic-based and is evidence-based, but I do think that it covers everything that odd that I listed about him. The first thing I want to address is the inability for him to use ninjutsu, because that's where I, I'm most confident in my theory. I'll first establish that just saying he has no aptitude for it makes no sense if you read into how ninjutsu works. Guy did say that Lee has zero talent for it, but it seems like anyone can do it. It's not exclusive to certain clans or descendants of the Sage of the Six Paths. Sakura came from a civilian family and went on to learn the summoning jutsu. Tenten, the only Konoha 12 member without a last name, also demonstrated ninjutsu when she used the Sage of the Six Paths ninja tools in the war arc. We never hear anything about her clan, nor do we hear anything about Lee's. Going back to the beginning of Ninjutsu, it actually stemmed from Ninshu. Ninshu was taught to regular humans by the Sage of the Six Paths, but was later transformed into Ninjutsu. Ninshu uses chakra to allow you to understand others, and we saw this in the war arc when Naruto gave QB chakra to the Shinobi Alliance. The Alliance was not only able to see his memories, but they were also able to see Hashirama's. The manga is vague about how Ninchu turned into Ninjutsu, but in the anime, Indra invented it and other humans followed by example. So these are regular humans who aren't related to Hagoromo, and yet they can teach themselves Ninjutsu. So I find it hard to believe that Rock Lee just can't do it because he simply just can't do it. We see characters in the present and the past of the show that aren't special in any way and are able to learn it. And it's not like Lee has zero skill at all when it comes to this. He can do one of the basic skills of a shinobi, which is walk on water. We saw him do this while he was standing outside the cave where the One Tails was sealed. This is even harder than climbing on hard surfaces, as that requires manipulating a fixed amount of chakra, whereas walking on water requires you to constantly fluctuate your chakra in order to match the moving liquid. Lee's chakra manipulation goes even further than that, though. He can open six out of the eight inner gates by the war arc. Opening gates is an extreme form of chakra manipulation where you remove the chakra limiters in your own chakra system. This is a technique that is supposed to be extremely hard to learn and Kakashi even notes that Lee learning so many gates so fast in part one suggests that just hard work did not accomplish that alone, which means that he does have talent. Kakashi's statement holds weight because Guy's dad, who never made it past Ginning, learned the gates after 20 years of daily training. He didn't specify whether that meant he learned eight gates or one gate, after 20 years, but this still shows that Lee learning it so fast indicates he has talents when compared to someone like Guy's dad who was lacking in talent. But gates are not ninjutsu as it is just you manipulating your own chakra. If you look at what it takes to learn ninjutsu, it becomes apparent what step Rock Lee got stuck on. Naruto learning the Rasengan with Jiraiya is one of those rare moments where we really see how you learn ninjutsu. Jiraiya starts the training by trying to get Naruto to pop a water balloon. He says that Naruto must first use what he learned in the tree climbing exercise, secondly use what he learned from walking on water, and now learn the third step in transforming that chakra into something that can pop a water balloon. The way you transform that chakra manipulation into a jutsu is imagining it. When Naruto passes the second step by popping an air balloon, he makes his breakthrough by focusing and imagining a leaf symbol in the middle of the balloon. It's even spelled out by Jiraiya when he says that Naruto was imagining his chakra rotating the opposite way of how it actually rotates. So to perform the Rasengan, you have to imagine your chakra rotating in your palm. 
He's not the only character to say learning jutsu takes imagination. When Naruto asks Asuma for tips on wind style, Asuma says that he should imagine his chakra splitting and grinding against itself. These are really the only two instances where we thoroughly see a character learn a jutsu from scratch. The key word for both of these instances is imagination. It's particularly interesting how Jirai brings up tree climbing and water walking two things Rock Lee can do. We've also seen the gates explained some, and imagination is never brought up. It's explained more like chakra manipulation, just like walking on water. So my theory is that Rock Lee can't use ninjutsu because his imagination is impaired. It's just uncanny how Jiraiya brought up water walking as the step before learning a jutsu. Not being able to visualize well enough explains why Lee can do something as difficult as learn gates, but can't learn to produce a single clone. Manipulating chakra isn't something that should require imagination because it's something that you can actually feel. When Kakashi explains climbing on trees, he says to move your chakra to your feet, not imagine your chakra moving to your feet. Whereas Jiraiya says you need to imagine your chakra rotating to produce a Rasengan. I think I've explained it enough, but the bottom line is that Lee can manipulate his own chakra, but he can't use his imagination to create a jutsu. I think this is logical if you really examine what it takes to open gates versus what it takes to learn a jutsu. And this isn't far-fetched because there is a real-life disorder for this. It's called aphantasia, and it is estimated about 1% of people have it. Aphantasia is a disorder that has been scarcely researched, but it essentially means you have a reduced imagination. For some, they can't imagine it at all, and for others, their imagination is very limited. I believe this would be one of the disorders Lee has. He may even have some level of visualization, but it's not enough considering how hard we saw Naruto have to focus in order to learn the Rasengan. So to sum up the first half of my theory, I believe Rock Lee has aphantasia, and this explains why he's the one shinobi who can't use jutsu, but at the same time can use gates. Seemingly normal people can learn it like Sakura, and some are self-taught like the humans alive during Hagoroma's time. Rock Lee can manipulate his chakra because he can feel it instead of imagining it. Using jutsu is the next step of chakra control, and the reason he is stuck at right before that step is he can't visualize well enough. But this isn't the only disorder I believe he has. All those other strange things I pointed out about him isn't explained by aphantasia, but it is explained by another disorder. This disorder also sees higher rates of aphantasia compared to those without the disorder. But before I name what I think he may have, I'll explain all the evidence for it beforehand. The first thing I'll talk about is his behavior. Like I said earlier, there's a broad range of behaviors in the series, but Lee takes it to the extreme. His character almost entirely revolves around training to become stronger, or testing his training by fighting others. You can call this an obsession, especially considering that Guy called it an obsession as well. But this obsession is perhaps the strongest of the series. When Guy first started studying Lee, he seemed to be amazed by how hard and long he would train. And we know Guy is one of the hardest working characters in the series. But this obsession is so strong that it overrides any obstacle. When Gara crippled Lee, he briefly passed out, but shortly afterwards stood up to continue fighting. When he stood up, he was completely unconscious. His desire to fight a low-stakes match was so great that his subconscious forced him to stand up despite having two broken limbs. And when he first woke up in the hospital, he immediately began doing one-armed push-ups to train. When compared to other characters' obsessions, Lee's relationship with training transcends the word obsession. When Naruto woke up in the hospital after failing to save Sasuke, he accepted that in his current state he couldn't do anything about it. And this obsession had a far deeper meaning than simply just training for the sole sake of improving. When Madara decided he wanted an infinite Tsukiyome, he waited for decades because there was nothing he could do about it at that time. When Sasuke was pushed to his absolute limit against Daedara, he chose to rest instead of continuing his life goal of killing Itachi. And this is despite him knowing that if he rests, the Leaf Platoon sent after him would catch up to him. When Naruto can't save his brother from evil incarnate due to injuries, he chooses to rest because that's all he can do. When Sasuke can't continue to track the man that executed his entire clan, he chooses to rest because that's all he can do. When Lee can't continue a fight that only affects his ninja rank, his body still gets up in a fighting stance despite him being knocked out cold. It's just too extreme for me to ignore and say there's nothing different about Lee. His behavior supports this since it is in the extreme as well. There are several moments where he just confuses everyone around him by his behavior, and this is mainly because of how he's socially tone deaf. One example would be when he was waiting to fight in the prelims. His fight was the second to last, so he was getting antsy right before he was selected. At first he tried to poorly feign that he would rather just go last at this point, which made four people around him just pause in confusion. 
And then when he's selected right after, he says that he had only said that so that he would be picked. Which is sensible because it's like the saying, a watched pot never boils. But then he continues by making an analogy that it's like throwing rocks at a telephone pole. Once you aim to miss, you hit it in the dead center. Maybe this is a common saying in Japan, but I really doubt it. Another head-scratching moment happens when he's fighting Kimi Mario. In the middle of their fight, Lee stops and says that he must take his medicine. This isn't a medicine that is very vital, considering that when he mistakenly drank sake instead, nothing bad happened to him. The whole sequence has always just been odd to me. The main example I have would be comparing his introduction to the other introductions made when the Genin teams were formed. I'll let the difference speak for itself by playing some clips from the anime. I see. And you, Neji. I'd rather not say. Things I like and things I hate. I don't feel like telling you that. My hobby is eating different kinds of ramen and comparing them. And my future dream is to be the greatest Hokage. How about me, Sensei? I want to show I can be a splendid ninja as well. Even if I do not have ninjutsu or genjutsu. I want to prove it to the whole world! Even Naruto at the height of his Believe It phase does not compare to the intensity and enthusiasm Lee exuded. It just shows that Lee doesn't pick up on social cues. It's why in most scenes I see him and he always seems to stick out because it's like he's in his own world. And this world only contains Guy, training, and testing the results of his training by fighting. So we have a character who is socially tone deaf as seen by his introduction is so rigid in his ways that he has to take unimportant medicine during a fight with his life on the line, and is so hyper fixated on being the best that he attempts to continue to fight despite being knocked out cold. You could maybe dismiss this if it wasn't for his eyes also being extremely different. Why on earth would Kishimoto decide to make him the only character with circles for eyes, and include all these other solely unique things about him? The other disorder I believe he has may seem far-fetched if I name drop it now, so let me present my final piece of evidence. One anime that has characters with an eye design similar to Lee is Death Note. In Death Note, El and Nier don't have perfect circles for eyes, but their eyes are far more circular in nature than any other character in that show. And you know what is a very well accepted fan theory for those two characters? It's that they both have autism. I'll name some of the evidence that supports this. Both Light and Nier are hyper fixated on being detectives to the point it's all we see them do in the show. Everything I remember them doing has something to do with solving the Kira case. Similar to how almost everything Lee does revolves around his fixations. L can't sit in a chair properly and instead must crouch in it. A typical sign of autism is not being able to sit in a chair normally. Another typical sign is that Nier plays with toys while working and is very rigid in how he arranges them. He also constantly twirls his hair in the same pattern and this symptom would be repetitive motor movements. Finally, they are both socially awkward. They avoid eye contact and always talk in a deadpan fashion. This highly contrasts the often stressed out and animated detectives surrounding them. Lee doesn't display as many symptoms, but this is probably because there is less room to portray that in a battle shown him. A common symptom is hyper fixating on few topics of interest. I've already explained what those are and how severe they are. Another symptom is him strictly adhering to a routine, like when he takes medicine in the middle of a fight. And of course, he also does not seem to pick up on social cues, which is what causes him to be socially awkward. The final sign that points to him having autism is aphantasia. Aphantasia has not been studied very much, and even less so in tandem with autism. But I have found some studies that have found that autism and aphantasia are correlated. One study said that 5% of those with autism have aphantasia, which is 5 times more likely than those without autism. And that's the thing about autism that makes it so fascinating. No two cases are the same and its symptoms are broad along with their severity. One person may avoid all eye contact possible and another may only make intense eye contact. Some people with autism have aphantasia and others have intense levels of visualization. The range of symptoms and how they contrast is why it's called a spectrum. I wouldn't say Rock Lee shows that many symptoms, but when you factor in everything else it makes sense, especially since his eyes are circular just like Ellen Near. So really just to sum everything up, I'm sure that Rock Lee has aphantasia, because in order to create a jutsu you have to imagine. All the other unique aspects of his character point towards him also having autism. This is because of his behavior and how his circular eyes are suspiciously similar to other anime characters who are widely theorized to have autism. Aphantasia is also more common than usual in people with autism. I'd really like to hear what y'all have to think about this because this is something I've come up with completely on my own. I also am open to hearing suggestions for making videos about other plausible theories or other areas of Naruto that are mysterious. 
Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Comment something if you have something to say. And thank you all for watching, and I guess I'll see you all next time.